Hello and welcome to episode 5 of the Intro to Linux. At this point I'll go ahead and assume that you've got a dual boot system set up already, so let's talk about what you need now that you've got that system. A traditional desktop user uses a web browser, an email client, maybe an instant messaging client, and an uh, office suite of some sort. Well, Ubuntu comes with those things by default. So, if you go ahead and go into your upper left hand corner into the applications menu, you'll see under internet that you have, by default, Firefox web browser. I'm going to have quite a few extra things in my menu that you won't have in yours, but that's okay, those are the things that I've installed since I got my system running. So if you click on Firefox, you will see... As you see, that goes ahead and goes to my homepage, which is youtube.com, but if I come in here to the top and type in cnn.com, it takes me to CNN's webpage. Just a traditional web browser should work a lot like Internet Explorer, but in a lot of ways it should work better. There are some sites that are optimized for IE. Hopefully web, web developers are starting to get the idea and they're developing for cross-platform support. I know that in the work that I do, I support everything. But built into Firefox, there's an option called add-ons where you can come in and search for new add-ons. You see you've got download status bar, uh, video download helper. There's a ton of different add-ons you can install. Here are just some of the, the default uh, recommended ones from Firefox. Fox tab opens 3D in your browser, awesome. Adblock is a great add-on. It allows you to block ads on every site. That's bad for people like me that are on YouTube, but for other sites it's very helpful in a lot of ways. Your Amazon Universal Wishlist, FD, Twitter bar, great, great things out there. Moving right along, the next thing that you would probably want to use is, is an email client of some sort. So if you go into Applications, Office, Evolution Mail, and Calendar, that's the default one that comes with Ubuntu. You can go ahead and set it up however you'd like to set it up, restore it from a backup, give it your information. I've not spent a whole lot of time in Evolution, but I use Thunderbird most of the time. Thunderbird is made by the same people who made Firefox, the Mozilla Corporation, and it is a very nice email browser. And that actually gets us to the idea of installing new software. So, if you wanted to install that, go to Applications, Ubuntu Software Center, and type in Thunderbird. And you see here the very first one, Mozilla Thunderbird Mail-in Newsreader. You click Install, it asks you for your password, and then it tells you it's in progress. There you go, it's downloading. Moving right along for the sake of time, if you click on Applications and go to Internet, you can see the next item we're going to talk about, Empathy Instant Messaging Client. This actually aggregates all sorts of instant messaging clients into one location. So if you come up here once you've opened it and hit Edit Accounts, you see I've already got my Gmail account in there, but if I hit Add, you've got a whole bevy of options for protocol. You can select Facebook Chat, Google Chat, Jabber, AIM, ICQ, MSN, Yahoo, MySpace, even IRC, and IRC is where I spend most of my time. Not using this program, but another one. We'll talk about that later. But I'm going to go ahead and select IRC and give it Twill Test as the username and select Free Node as the network. You see, Free Node. Just in case you can't see it, Free Node. And then I'm going to hit Login. And now you see I'm available. I had to cut out a little bit there for time, but I am now available on ircfreenode.net. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Room and go to Join tell it the account which is twill test on freenode and give it the room pound twill which is the room that I run on freenode and there you go we are in the twill chat room we've got a bunch of people in there including myself and if I type in hey guys there you go I'm talking to other people the final application type to talk about would be office for now if you go into applications office you've got your traditional office programs presentation equates to Microsoft PowerPoint spreadsheet equates to Microsoft Excel and word processor is of course Microsoft word processors alternative If I click on one of those there you go open office writer you can just type in here this is a test select the text and do whatever you want to with it bold italic underline change the font to something else tons and tons of options go ahead and check it out if you haven't already I'll close out of that for now and of course the fun part if you want to install new software there's a couple of ways to do it. in earlier versions of Ubuntu if you click on the applications menu you won't have a software center there you'll have an add remove software but on the newer one you've got the software center this should look and feel a little bit like the add remove software but there are some key differences you've got featured applications in here that give you a list of the things that are really common and everybody seems to like Cheese is one of them that I really like. Uh, if, if you haven't tried it yet and you have a webcam, it's very fun. Uh, it's not exactly the best thing for recording your webcam, but it is definitely nice to take shots of yourself. For example, if I go into Cheese under Sound and Video, there we go. I'm now on my webcam, which is on top of my monitor, and I'm on the video camera at the same time. So closing out of that. But if you go back into your Git software, you've got all these categories you can choose from, tons of options. One thing I would recommend while we're in here is go into Ubuntu Restricted and install this very first one, the Ubuntu Restricted Extras, by clicking what would be an install button here. 
This gives you MP3 playback, all sorts of audio video codecs, Microsoft fonts, Flash plugins, uh, Java runtime environment, and DVD playback. So that'll just give you a bunch of stuff all in one place. It's not everything that you'll need, we'll get to that in just a second, but that will get you a long way from where you were. So Once you get that installed, we'll go ahead and close out of the software center and go back to Firefox because there's one more place you'd probably want to go if you're new to this. Go to metabuntu.org. And there you go. Metabuntu.org has a repository how-to where you can actually get the information on how to connect your system to Metabuntu. Metabuntu is a place where you can get all sorts of audio video codecs, you can get a lot of non-free software that might have some legal issues, but it, it's never going to come back to you. So you come to this Metabuntu page, uh, you click on the repository how-to, Follow this instructional information, go to the terminal and run this command. That's going to connect to Metabuntu, pull down the list, and, and get you ready to start using it. Once you've got that installed, you should be able to go into your package manager, which in this case would be the AdRemove software, the software center, or this other one, Synaptic Package Manager. Which, because I haven't shown you it before, this is Synaptic Package Manager, where you can install individual packages. For example, if I typed in cheese here, it shows me cheese is already installed, but if it were not, like a uh, cheese tracker, I don't know what that is, but if I clicked mark for installation, it'll tell me there are additional ones, mark those two, and hit apply, it'll go ahead and install that. I don't want to do that, so we're just gonna, gonna forget about it, but that would give you the ability to install new software in another way. There are a ton of different ways to install software. These are just some of the easiest ways to do it. So back in Metabuntu's website, you see that you've got a ton of individual packages you can install. Uh, you've got W32 codecs, W64 codecs, libdvd CSS2, but basically that's all there is to supporting some new codecs and some uh, encrypted DVD support. Well, that's all for this episode of the Intro to Linux. Feel free to mess around in the Ubuntu Software Center or the Add Remove Software menu. See what you like, what you don't like. It's all going to come down to your preferences. If you want any additional software, a lot of websites will have the downloadable Debian packages or RPM packages if you're not on Ubuntu. I'm not going to recommend doing that immediately because there can be some complications to that, but for example, if you wanted to use Google's Chrome web browser, you go to chrome.google.com and hit the download button and it'll take care of a lot of it for you. You just download it and install it. But that's enough for this episode. Make sure to come back next time for episode 6. We're going to be talking about installing Windows inside of VMware inside of Ubuntu so that you can keep using some of your Windows software without having to have a Windows installation. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.